activity, highly accurate protein structure prediction with alpha fold. Now, I know nothing about biology and frankly, even the architecture here, I wasn't too keen on, but I mention this paper and this model all the time in, cos in, cos in casual conversation. I figured I should know a little bit about it and I figured there'd be a few insights that even with my lack of a deep dive, I'd say I can still get a little bit out of this and I figured I'd just go ahead and share it. Through an enormous experimental effort, the structures of around 100,000 unique proteins have been determined. Oh, what the years is, by the way? How old is it actually now? 2021? I thought it was older than that. I thought it was like 2018. Okay. The structures of around 100,000 unique proteins have been determined, but this represents a small fraction of the billions of known protein sequences. Structural coverage is bottlenecked by the months to years of painstaking effort required to determine a single protein structure. Predicting the three-dimensional structure that a protein will adopt based solely on its amino acid sequence, the structure prediction component of the protein folding problem, has been an important open research problem for more than 50 years. Here we provide the first computational method that, that can regularly predict protein structures with atomic accuracy. Novel machine learning approach that incorporates physical and biological knowledge about protein structure. So that right there, incorporating the actual structure into the model shape is a super important insight. For example, I think we used to do computer vision inputting just single, like we would flatten the images and make them single vertical vectors, which was silly and huge benefits, huge gains, obviously when we actually allowed for a two, for a two dimensional, three dimensional, two dimensional, matrix and then three-dimensional to be incorporated because it allows when you let more of the structure of the actual thing go into the model uh, it gives the model more information i don't know the units here but accuracy of 0 0.96 a with a dot uh, this means uh, a width of a carbon atom is approximately 1.4 a with a dot that's pretty cool so this thing's that sounds accurate to me with the width of a carbon atom. It's two thirds of that. That's pretty cool. Novel neural art. What the heck? That's weird. Novel neural network architectures and training pro procedures based on the evolutionary, physical, and geometric constraints of protein structures. Oh, I counted them out here. In particular, we demonstrate a new architecture to jointly embed multiple sequence alignments and pairwise features a new output representation and associated loss that enable accurate end-to-end -end structure prediction, a new equivariant attention architecture, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I counted them out. I don't know what they mean, but there's seven of them. So they, with this model, introduced seven, at least three, but maybe seven, because it's, it uses the word new three times, and it lists seven total things, either three or seven. New actual parts of the architecture is how they did this. The key innovations in the EVO former block are new mechanisms that enable direct reasoning about the spatial and evolutionary relationships. As I said earlier, spatial structure information. Key innovations in this section of the network include breaking the chain structure to allow simultaneous local refinement of all parts of the structure. I had a thought on that, but I forget what it was. Repeatedly applying the final loss to outputs and then feeding the outputs recursively into the same modules. So I didn't realize they were doing that. This this process is complicated to get these protein chains to fold or whatever it looks like. Uh, they actually run it back through the model many, many times. They put it in the model, get an output, take the output, put it back into the model, which is kind of crazy. So it's kind of like a the, the model doesn't have an inbuilt time step. You have to just put it back into the model for the next time step. The key principle of the building block of the network, names the EVOFORMER, is to view the prediction of protein structures as a graph inference problem in 3D space. So this is a graph neural network, or at least related somehow. I understood none of this. Many constraints must be satisfied, including the triangle inequality on distances. This is an example of them incorporating actual math and physics. I don't know how they incorporated it, but, but they did. Uh, triangle inequality is a pretty basic basic fact of of math of the universe of physics 
We use a trained network to predict the structure of around 350,000 diverse sequences and make a new data set of predicted structures filtered to a high confidence subset. We then train the same architecture again from scratch using a mixture of that data and this new data set of predicted structures as the training data. That's interesting. So they actually use synthetic data in this process. So this crazy successful model is an example of using high quality synthetic data from, a, from an original model, from a prior model. Procedure makes effective use of the unlabeled sequence data and considerably improves the accuracy of the resulting network. Ad additionally, we randomly mask out or mutate individual re residu residues bleh, within the MSA and have a bi-directional encoder representation from transformer BERT style objective to predict the masked elements of MSA sequences. So I don't know if you're anyone's aware, but the BERT as opposed to GPT, GPT is goes in one direction. It can only output a word at the end of a sentence. The BERT language model in contrast, the language model version can fill in a missing word within a piece of text. So like fill like a, like Mad Libs, you know what Mad Lib is kind of like that. That's the, the bi-directionalness of it. And they're using something similar here uh, to predict masked elements of seek of something or other. Uh, and I presume that frequently data sets just have missing pieces. Am I guessing their reason for that? Or maybe it actually has a productivity increase or performance increase. I'm not really sure why, but that's part of the structure as well. To understand how AlphaFold predicts protein structure, we trained a separate structure module while keeping all parameters of the main network frozen. This provides a trajectory of 192 intermediate structures, one per full evoformer block, in which each intermediate represents the belief of the network of the most likely structure at that block. The resulting trajectories are surprisingly smooth after the first few blocks, showing that AlphaFold makes constant incremental improvements to the structure until it can no longer improve. Um, this is like unembedding in a language model, but doing some earlier layers. I know the um, more recent Hydra paper did a lot of unembedding. So basically they have a this model with so many layers uh, and they can at any given layer convert that layer to the answer if that had been the output at that layer kind of thing. And what they found is that the first few layers, the, the this direction, I can't, I can't. I'm looking at the camera right now, getting confused by the, the directions. The first few layers, the model basically is just like jumping around, guessing different structures. And then it settles on one that it actually likes and it takes the one it actually likes and does very tiny incremental refinements till it's perfect, which I thought was interesting. These trajectories also illustrate the role of network depth. For very challenging proteins, the network searches and rearranges secondary structure elements from many layers before settling on a good structure. For other proteins, the network finds the final structure within the first few layers. That's pretty cool, um, I thought anyways. Harder problems obviously are harder. It makes you wonder if you need some extra layers at the end for those harder proteins for that final little perfect touch. The there are still factors that affect accuracy or limit the applicability of the model. <clears throat> These approaches are related work. These approaches effectively leverage the rapid improvement in computer vision systems, or older approaches, by treating the problem of protein structure prediction as converting an image of evolutionary couplings to an image of the protein distance matrix and then integrating the distance predictions into a heuristic system that produces the final 3D coordinate prediction. Uh, I just wanted to point out that advances in one section of advances in architecture in one subfield of AI help other subfields. Uh, I wanted to point that out because I have a paper coming out soon about architectures and interactions and stuff and how innovation works exactly. And I wanted to just point it out there while I can to get it out of everyone's heads. A few recent studies have been developed to predict the 3D coordinates directly, but the accuracy of these approaches does not match traditional handcrafted structure prediction pipelines. In parallel, the success of attention-based networks for language processing and more recently computer vision has inspired the exploration of attention-based methods for interpreting protein sequences. Same thing there. AlphaFold is able to handle missing the physical context and produce accurate models in challenging cases. The ability to handle under-specified structural conditions is essential. I think that relates to the whole BERT thing I said earlier with the masking. 
We hope that AlphaFold and computational approaches that apply its techniques for other biophysical SIP problems will become essential tools in modern biology. I hope so too. Sounds cool. Didn't have too much to say on this. I just wanted to go through because it's a huge paper. I have no urge to actually get into the details of the structure or anything until they get used elsewhere and things I'm more interested in. But it's cool to go through stuff like this and to see the, the craziest of the breakthroughs. But uh, yeah, that's about all I've got for now. Uh, end of video.